that buzzwall with Garboda that we've been talking about. Yeah, and um, we know that uh, one big thing for, for Benjamin is to get as many Zoroarks into play as he can, try to get his trades available to him and draw as many cards as possible to have the best options. Uh, Frank is going to be trying to shut that down with Garbotoxin. Yeah, definitely. And so a key card in this matchup, I guess, for Benjamin is that field blower to be able to get his abilities back every turn. But when you're not able to trade to, to look for that field blower, how do you find it than other with, you know, supporters that draw you more cards? Yeah, we do see one Garbodor with Garbotoxin in the prize cards for Frank. And there is the handshake. Both these players are going to start off uh, round 13 for us. Over on the other side, we did see Ben's prizes. A lot of supporter cards, which actually can be pretty awkward. Uh, if he doesn't have trade available to him, how does he find his field blowers if he doesn't have those draw supporters? And that is just an energy attachment, a, a fighting fury belt, and a pass from Frank. Uh, not Probably not the ideal startup that he wanted. No trubbishes down on the field, so we're not going to see a Garbo Toxin anytime soon. Yeah, and uh, this is kind of what can happen when you're playing a deck that doesn't focus on uh, a lot of draw, a lot of Zoroarks, is that you just hit these hands. And... Uh, uh, I mean, he's going to be there for a while. Buzzwell has a lot of hit points, especially with that Fighting Fury belt. But uh, definitely not where you want to be. You probably want to play some more cards. And really interesting choices for the Ultra Ball there out of Benjamin, getting rid of that Field Blower, which is such a useful resource uh, in this matchup, but also a puzzle of time, which means that, you know, potentially, potentially you're not able to get back that Field Blower yeah. uh, if you're getting rid of your puzzle of times. I, I think this is a, a... If Frank is paying attention to this, he's going to pick up a lot of information on Benjamin's hand. You don't throw away pieces of the puzzle and you don't throw away field blowers. So probably has more field blowers in his hand. And we did see, I think he actually started with three in his opening hand. <laughs> so very awkward for Ben. I'm sure he was praying to see all those field blowers early, but uh, maybe not this early. <laughs> yeah, it also means that if he's looking for, to play a draw supporter in, uh, a draw supporter in later turns like a Sycamore, you know, you're not really going to want to play that if you're going to get rid of your field blowers all at once. But we do see the standard start for a Galaspod Zorak deck in that Bridget, just to get out three basic Pokemon. Yep. Well, uh, looking over at Frank's hand, does have that Guzma available to him, so he will be able to put on some pressure against those Zoruas. He also has Acerola, so if he just wants to go to game two, he can pick up his Pokemon <laughs> and leave. He does have damage on it from that Rainbow Energy already. So <laughs> That's right. So we'll see what Frank decides to go with. I, I think the option where you take prizes is much better. Yeah, probably favored and probably actually how he got to this point <laughs> in the competition, I think. Uh, interesting, Benjamin goes for those three Zoruas. Uh, it's really nice to be able to have as many trade abilities available to you as possible. And he knows there is every chance that a Guzma could come out and a Zorua knocked out, uh, which would have only left him with one Zorua if he'd chosen to go for a Wimpod instead. Definitely. And uh, especially with that Zorark in his hand, that's the only way he's going to be able to draw any cards. So uh, the more Zoruas you have, the more potential Zoraks you have. And there we see that uh, Frank actually top decks a Buzzwall, so he does have another Pokemon there, which means that that Wimpod on the bench there with the energy, which actually is quite threatening if it becomes a Golisopod and can get another energy on it, deal quite a lot of damage to that active Buzzwall, so that actually keeps him alive. And Frank then chooses to actually attack into the Wimpod rather than knock out a Zorua. Yeah, this is actually a fairly brilliant play from from Frank. He recognizes that an early Golisopod uh, would be a disaster for him, but if it's in the active spot, then you don't have to worry about uh, first impression being the big knockout, and it's fairly unlikely that your opponent already has Golisopod and uh, double colorless energy to uh, start to put on some pressure on this Buzzwall. Yeah, it makes it look quite a lot more difficult and would not be an option available to him if he was playing the deck that doesn't run Floatstone, the Golisopod variant, but this variant does actually have one Floatstone, and it could be for situations like this where you need to Guzma to get out of the active and then retreat to get back into it. Yeah, and uh, right away we see Frank, he's out of energy cards. That Enhanced Hammer was very big for Benjamin. Has to just Acerola a Pokemon that had 10 damage on it <laughs> so that he could continue to get some pressure down. Also, Benjamin wisely evolved the Zorark with 30 damage on it to avoid a potential double knockout here. Just the Wimpod's going to fall. Yeah, and so we see then the Wimpod's going to knock down and it's a little bit more pressure onto a Zoro as well. Really trying to target those down before they become Zoroarks uh, to prevent Benjamin having the access to the trade ability. Yeah, looks like Ben is all done with grass energies, and nope, he's going to draw some more. So uh, <laughs> he's going to—he's seen uh, all of his grass energies now, and he's just going to have to go in with his Tapu Lele. He's got the double colorless energy and choice band. Uh, that means that he's doing 90 damage, and uh, still uh, Buzzwall has a little more time before it's in range of being knocked out, but uh, definitely not a spot you want to be in. Uh, this Lele is putting on a fair amount of pressure. 
Yeah, and so really not the tool you want to be putting onto a garbo garboder that has garbotoxin either, that fury belt. Um, but you do what you can when you want to prevent your opponent from drawing more cards. It looks like that Boswell being stuck in the active spot there, with that 100 damage on it already, that Lele can still just come in and knock it out. Yeah, um, we also see Frank. He, f he finally drew his first supporter. Uh, he was able to draw into an N off of his prize card, so probably going to get to see that next turn. And Benjamin, he saw the tool go onto the Garbodor, but didn't feel too threatened. He has uh, those field blowers available to him, so trades are right back in play. And I'm sure he would like to see another Zorark now, just to avoid a potential Guzma knocking out that other Zoru there. Yeah, maybe it was great that he started with three field blower in hand. Uh, yeah, it's worked out <laughs> it was fairly well. the pro well for plays. Him. Uh, does trade and doesn't find a supporter uh, that's able to use. I mean, we know that in his prizes, there's quite a few of his supporter cards there. Um, he doesn't know that, but it looks like he could draw some of them now. Still misses the two ends. Yep, uh, well, pretty big hand for Frank. He only had three cards, but those three cards were Enhanced Hammer, an Energy to start putting on some pressure, and a beautifully timed N. He's going to remove the Field Blower from Benjamin's hand. He only has one left in his whole deck. And I think this tool is going to be pretty relevant as to how this game pans out. If Frank is able to find uh, a Floatstone or even a Fury Belt here, he can lock out all these trade abilities. Yeah, and I mean, the Jet Punches will add up as well. Even if he's just attacking for one energy, doing that Jet Punch, 30 to the active, 30 to a bench Pokemon, that can really add up if you're not able to use trade and find new Zoroark GXs to evolve those Zoroars into. Absolutely. But we'll have to see what Benjamin draws. He does get to draw four cards. It can be enough sometimes to just find what you need. Yeah, uh, I'm sure Benjamin probably feels like he should have drawn more cards. Uh, it, he didn't. He's taken his two prizes very awkwardly <laughs> with Tapu Lele. So uh, realizing that you're already at the mid stage of this game and you've done nothing <laughs> uh, is probably pretty weird. And wow, Frank, he was able to find that Floatstone. Such a big card for him. Even has, it looks like a second one in hand. So if we do see that final field blower, uh, he will have an answer. But Benjamin, for his for his end, actually drew an Evo Soda, which is just as good as drawing a, a Zoroark GX. We'll be able to evolve that Zorua into a Zoroark GX and start trading and maybe finding a bit of a better supporter that isn't perhaps Guzma, not one that you particularly need right now, and you've got to be finding those energies. Yeah, he still will have to find that Field Blower, of course. Uh, but it's nice to evolve right now and just avoid being knocked out immediately uh, by the Jet Punch. But it's definitely a lot of pressure right now. I think Benjamin's really eyeing up if he can find an energy card uh, just do something to this buzzwall to make it feel uh, on uh, on edge. Yeah, apply a little bit of pressure back. I mean, that Tapu Lele GX, just for a double colorless, can apply quite a lot of pressure and knock out that buzzwall in two turns if Frank is unable to find a Fighting Fury Belt, which we know a couple of have been discarded already. It looks like uh, players just uh, identifying there was a, a little uh, missed damage there, so uh, adjusting that on the Tapu Lele. And it looks like Benjamin, he found himself a Guzma, and he's probably just going to try to buy some time with this Trubbish. Uh, but <laughs> Frank has the answer. He's got that Floatstone, and he can jump right back into play here. Also going to play down his hand, and he's got another N. And that Espeon EX as well that he's just played down, very relevant in this matchup when you're jet punching quite a lot in quite a, quite a few turns in a row. If you're able to get just 60 damage on that Zoroark GX and then devolve them with SB on EX, you're going to take multiple prizes and knock out a lot of Zoroark GX from play. Yeah, it's very intimidating to see that on the bench. Uh, he already has uh, two Zoroark in play. Uh, if, if Frank decides to just place the damage um, on both the Zoroarks, uh, he has that lined up for him, and that's two free prize cards. And yes, Golisopod Zoroark does typically play Acer Rollers as well, but you can't Acer Roller two Pokemon in one turn. Yeah, and it's really hard to find those Acer Rollers when you have no draw engine like Trade. Instead, he's just seeing four cards and uh, hoping for the best. I think Frank correctly identifies he's going to put 60 damage on the active Pokemon. He's just thinking about where to place the extra 30. And yeah, he puts on that bench Zoroark GX, identifying, you know, if you can't get rid of my SB on uh, EX, or if I can't put an energy on it, you know, those two Zoroark GXs are going down next turn. Yeah, uh, absolutely agree with this play here. Uh, Benjamin, he did only see four cards, but of those, he was able to find an energy and an enhance hammer. So as this game starts to slow down, this is something that you tend to see is just which player has the energies to attack. Uh, and uh, if you are that player who's attacking and putting on the pressure, uh, y you're going to find yourself in the dominant seat. Yeah, in this variant of Buzzwall, I mean, we've seen a lot of Buzzwall that's just fighting, so it could run just fighting energy, but because this variant of Buzzwall with its Garboda actually runs the Trash Lanch Garboda, which requires uh, Psychic Energy to be able to attack, 
players get around this by playing a rainbow energy, which can count as a psychic or a fighting energy and satisfy both energy requirements, but not so great when it's a special energy. It can just be enhanced hammered away. Yeah, we've seen both players uh, make use of those enhanced hammers uh, fairly well here. Frank was able to find another one uh, to fight right back, and uh, he also found himself some, some big energy cards off of that Professor Sycamore. I think also really relevant, he found the Floatstone, and so now he's able to get the SP on EX into the active spot. He's able to devolve the two Zoroark GXs. They go back to Benjamin's hand, and there's enough damage on there to knock out the Zoroars that are underneath. Yeah, this is a, a huge play for Frank. He's going to uh, make a big sweep. He's only two prize cards away. He, he can eye up that Lele, uh, the Tapu Lele GX that's sitting on the bench with just 100 hit points left. Uh, or maybe if a, a few more bench Pokemon, uh, small basics come to play, he could work out a double knockout with that Zerua. Yeah, certainly. I mean, he doesn't really have much energy in play, and he doesn't really have the attackers he wants in play either, so it's a bit of an awkward matchup in general. But, yeah, I mean, what does Benjamin do here? What does he look look to look to get out? Well, uh, generally you would try to buy a little bit of time with those Guzmas, but all three Pokemon have free <laughs> retreat right now on Frank's bench. Uh, he saw that two field blowers have already hit the discard pile. Uh, a, a piece of puzzle of time is in the discard pile, so it feels like these float zones are going to stick, and I think that was a safe bet. And ordinarily players also with their Ultra Ball are going to be looking for that Tapu Lele GX to be able to get supporters that they need, but... You know, Wonder Tag is one of those abilities that gets locked out by Garbotoxin, so it looks like Benjamin's looking for the Mewtwo. Uh, how relevant do you think the Mewtwo is in this matchup? Yeah, I, I think Mewtwo is a great call when you're playing against uh, a deck that plays Garbodor. Uh, if you're playing Mew, that means that, that that can be shut off immediately. You lose that ability to copy any attacks. So Mewtwo can be great. It's got so many hit points. Uh, Espeon has the weakness. Buzzwool has weakness. So uh, you pretty much can target down anything in this deck as long as you have a double colorless energy. Uh, I, but I think that's the one piece that Benjamin's missing right now. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it looks like he's a little bit on the back foot. He really is just trying to buy time. Uh, Frank only has two prizes left, and, you know, there are pretty easy targets on the board in the form of a Tapu Lele that's been softened up by sev with 70 damage, and a Zoroark that's actually weak to a Lycanroc, um, also weak to just being devolved if it has 60 damage on it already. Yep, looks like we're going to see uh, Frank potentially... Uh, using Ultra Ball. Uh, Triple th Ultra Ball. Th th that works out just fine. <laughs> you only get one Pokemon, though. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, they don't stack. Uh, he's going to get himself a, a new Buzzwall. Uh, this means he can start to put some game-winning energy onto uh, this Buzzwall. Uh, strong energy would do 100 damage to this Zorark GX, and um, I'm sure there's plenty of ways that he could find <laughs> that little extra bit of damage. Yeah, giving a read to the Mewtwo there, thinking, how much of a threat is this? How many energy can I get away with attaching to my Buzzwall before that thing can come in and hit me for a knockout? Yeah, I'm sure that Frank is familiar with that card, but just wants to make sure. Uh, I don't want to walk into anything too dangerous. Uh, maybe my Trash Alanche will be able to uh, help me out here instead. Yeah, that's an attacker. It's a card we haven't seen for a while, actually. Uh, the Drampa Garboda decks, typically uh, pairing that Drampa GX with you know, Garboda that had Garbotoxin or the Trash Alanche was very popular a while ago, but then all these fighting decks came in and sort of dropped off the radar. But now we see back again this Trash Alanche Garboda that uh, really punishes your opponent for playing a lot of item cards. And a lot of players do play a lot of item cards now with those Puzzle of Times and you know Max Elixirs. Um, yeah, it's a really nice inclusion back into this deck and quite good in this format. Yeah, and it's surprising to see that Frank does have Rainbow Energy available. We've already seen him use quite a few, uh, but that is what he needs to use Trash Alanche. Benjamin's going to give us the count to see how many item cards have been used. We know he's used uh, some puzzles and field blowers, Ultra Balls. And I think the total is eight. So we're going to see some damage come down, but not enough for the knockout. Yep, uh, Zork also has that resistance to Psychic, so we're going to see 140 damage. Uh, eight was the correct count. But uh, this is a, a pretty big play by, by Frank. He's going to be able to put some, some game-ending damage onto the board if Benjamin's not able to find a way out. And he's going to try to buy time the only way he can. He says, don't have an energy. Uh, and Frank only has a strong, so he can't attach that to the Espeon, actually. Yeah, and he does actually only run two of the basic fighting energy. So he's already had one uh, in the discard pile from a, paying a retreat cost. So he's got to find the other one if he's able to actually use that Espeon. Alternatively, even a... Looks like he's Ultra Balling away. A basic energy, though. Oh, well, um, he, he, of course, could just... Uh, Look for a Guzma. Yeah, if he, if, he can, if he can find a way to do that, maybe if he has a field blow of his own, he could use an ability and uh, go find that Guzma. 
He can also just play it slow. If he uh, if he does have a way to use um, Jet Punch, he could start to get some damage onto the Zoroark and just uh, finish it off that way. Yeah, definitely. Uh, this does open Benjamin, though. He can play Ace Roller. He can play Max Potion. There are ways to clean the damage off that Zoroark GX, but he has to find them. And again, being under Garbotoxin Ability Lock uh, makes that quite difficult, really. Yep, and uh, well, uh, Floatstone is a great way to get out of this. Uh, and he has that strong energy for his Buzzwall, also holding on to a uh, Fighting Fury Belt and a Professor Sycamore. So have to assume that he's going to be able to find himself a way to win this game in maybe the, the following turn. I do think that he's floats at number four in play at the moment. Yeah. So he's got all of them down there, so he can just switch around whenever he needs to. Yeah, this means he might hold on to his Fighting Fury Belt uh, for the, a following turn if Field Blower were to be top decked. You want to have some tool for your Garbotoxin. And here Frank goes back into the, the Garbota that has the attack Trash Lanch, identifying that Mewtwo could be a little bit of a threat. I'm just going to deal with that rather than try to be greedy and, and knock out the Zoroark. Yeah, and uh, Benjamin recognizes that that's probably the end of the game. He hasn't had very much going for him, was not able to get out of that Garbotoxin lock, and Frank finds himself a, a pretty uh, deciding game one. But that's the power of Garbotoxin, I guess. Uh, we haven't seen it for a while, but really strong. If you can lock out your opponent's abilities... So many decks rely on abilities now. I mean, you know, uh, Secret Spring with those Gardevoirs, Trade with any Zoroark deck, really. All the Zoroark decks, yeah. <laughs> uh, the Rockruffs are so threatening uh, with the one energy just because they can become that, become that Lycanroc GX. Yeah, of course, Dangerous Rogue is a fantastic GX move, but those Bloodthirsty Eyes mean that you can catch or affect a Pokemon from the bench and then, you know, play another supporter, and that is really dangerous. So if you can prevent plays like that, you know, it's a winning strategy. Yeah, and we've seen Frank, he's been able to lock out so many decks. I would assume that he's been able to run through some of the Vikavolt Vulu decks uh, just by locking out their abilities and all the Zorark decks that we've we've seen make the top cut, or the top 32. Uh, if, he, if he runs into those, he can just play this nice, slow game and uh, play at his own pace. Yeah, I'd probably say with the Volcanions as well, as we know there's been a lot in the field uh, on day one. A lot of players are playing Volcanion. I think Australia is probably going to be known for, to be the country now <laughs> that it's just a Volcanion country. But yeah, if you can block out those steam ups, uh, if you can block out any support abilities like that, they can't really do much against you. Oh, looking over at the prize cards, nothing too big for Benjamin. On the other side, for uh, for Frank, we see his one Lily in the prize card. So if he does decide to play his hand low and uh, aim for uh, Tapu Lele to fill his hand up. That's not going to be an option. Benjamin, on, on the other hand, has his perfect supporter, the card that he always seems to have. I think the advice he gave everyone is for Bridget is key <laughs> to winning right. games. So there's his Bridget, and that's why he always starts with it. And I think in a deck like Zoroark GX, you can run for Bridget because, firstly, you need to to get out your Zoroas, but also when you run into Bridget late game, it just becomes excellent trade fodder. You can just put it into your discard pile and draw two new cards, and you don't have to worry about having to decide between cards you might really need at that time, which one do you need more? Yep, uh, Bridget, you can just throw away. His starting Pokemon with the Tapu Koko, uh, not as good. Uh, I'm sure he might even have to retreat to something else just because uh, this Pokemon can be knocked out with a strong energy and a Fighting Fury Belt. Uh, Wimpod's the only Pokemon that can uh, survive that opening turn Jet Punch. Yeah, and I think it's probably better to have the Zoroas at this point than it is to have the Wimpod because you really want to get things going with that trade. Uh, Wimpod, on the other hand, probably better later game when you're able to get Golisopod out and, you know, hit for 120 with first impression and maybe make it into a, a sort of a two-hit KO game yeah. where you can possibly win because you have a bit more stamina, a bit more durability with those ace rollers uh, and that max potion. I, I think this Tapu Lele is also a nod to uh, not giving early prize cards to Frank. Uh, he may also choose to just retreat to that Tapu Lele uh, just grabbing himself a supporter, but mainly just the body of the Tapu Lele on the board is pretty nice for him to have. But no, he's going to uh, take a chance, hope that Frank doesn't have that strong energy and the Fighting Fury Belt. It is a lot to ask for on the opening turn. And here comes down Parallel City. Now, Frank's thinking about it. Both players play two Parallel Cities, I believe. It's a card that's really just come back uh, over the course of this tournament. We didn't see much Parallel City for a while, but now it just seems like every deck's throwing in one or two. The ability to limit your opponent's bench to just three Pokemon is surprisingly powerful. Yeah, this works out really well for Frank. Benjamin doesn't want to use his Field Blowers to counter that Parallel City, and he doesn't play any other stadium besides Parallel City, which you can't use to counter a Parallel City. 
So that means that Benjamin's going to have to work with just this bench of three for uh, a pretty long while until it's acceptable to remove the float stone and the parallel city at the same time. Yeah, definitely. And when you have a buzz ball that could potentially have a fighting fury belt on it, you have a garbo door uh, with a float stone on it and a parallel city. How do you choose between the three? I mean, the fighting fury belt, you really want to get rid of that as well. Yeah, it's, it, it's a very difficult position to be in, and that's what Frank aims to do. He just wants to make your game as awkward as possible, <laughs> and uh, he'll just use these jet punches until uh, you eventually run out of stuff. Yeah, one card we didn't see last time that was in the prizes is that Energy Keeper Carb Inc. that Frank has just benched on, put on the bench there. Um, its ability is pretty useful. It protects your basic energy on your basic Pokemon from being discarded by attacks, abilities, um, trainer cards. Yeah. Doesn't yep. protect your special energy, unfortunately, which is something Frank had a problem with last game. That's but right. could keep his two fighting energy around for a little while longer if uh, if Benjamin had some way to get rid of them. Yeah, well, Benjamin, he finally is going to be able to use a trade. It's been a while since he's been able to <laughs> use that ability. And uh, right away, we see him throwing away that parallel city. He's not going to find any use for it because there's already one uh, uh, out in play. Yeah, it has become one of those cards that becomes trade fodder. Yeah. Uh, where he just recognizes, you know, if I get end, I don't want this card over again. I'm not going to use it. It's unlikely I'll be able to put it around the other way. Uh, so just get rid of it now and hopefully draw some better cards, better resources. But it doesn't look like he found really that much. Just a, a tool card and an energy. Yeah, very awkward. E even just an Ultra Ball or something would have been would would have been great for Benjamin instead. He might have to go with double grass energy on Zorg DX to get <laughs> some attacks off and. I uh, I don't think I've ever done that <laughs> in, yeah. in all of my games of, uh, of Zorak Elisopod. I think it's the desperation play you have in the back of your mind, though, when you, you look at your hand and you think, oh, it's not the Are right time to go into Elisopod. Yeah. yeah, but <laughs> I really want to attack with Zoroark sometime soon. We have to see Frank here. Does he just keep applying pressure to the active Tapu Koko? Or does he target down the Wimpod or the Zoroark? Yeah, I, I think this Rainbow Energy, as nice as it is to potentially uh, set up for absorption or knuckle impact. It's also just nice to have an extra energy if your opponent finds that enhanced hammer. And it, he, he sets that up so that his buzzwall is a pretty respectable, even that Fighting Fury Bell coming down. So it's going to take a while for Zorak to uh, remove this buzzwall. And uh, it's already starting to take some pretty good knockouts. Wimpod's at 30, Zoro's at 30, and Tepa Coco's off the board now. Yeah, that 30 damage on the Zoro forces Benjamin to find that Zoroark GX and evolve it this turn. Otherwise, it is being knocked out uh, Benjamin doesn't run, something that uh, Golisopod Zorak GX text used to run, Mr. Mime, so yeah. that would be really great in this matchup, possibly even in this whole tournament to prevent those that veg com damage coming down. Uh, but unfortunately, that Zorua took that 30, and it means that if it doesn't evolve this turn, you know, goodbye Zorua. Yeah, awkward spot here for Benjamin. Does he want to play another Grass Energy onto his Zorark and uh, commit to using Riotus Beating with double Grass? Uh, does he want to just play it onto the Wimpod, hope to find Golisopod in the future? Uh, or do you just pick the middle ground of, uh, we'll just see what my end gives me? <laughs> yeah, that wasn't too bad an end for Frank either, though, because I, I saw him holding a hand of multiple strong energies and a Tapu Lele. Right. So this way he'll be able to refresh, possibly find an energy again, uh, maybe get a tool to put down the, the Trubbish and maybe find a Garboda, uh, preferably the one with the Garbo Toxin. Yeah, that would work out fairly well for Frank. I'm sure he's in a... He's thinking he's in a pretty great spot, especially if Benjamin isn't able to find himself any energy cards here. Uh, you'd have to think that uh, Frank's Buzzwell would just have be able to run over almost anything in Benjamin's deck, besides, of course, that Mewtwo. Uh, we'll see if Benjamin's able to potentially find that and set up a, a nice, sneaky knockout. Yeah, but I think with the Mewtwo, it's only going to be putting in work maybe one time, unless you can puzzle of time it back as well. So, I have to see, he does actually find the Mewtwo. He finds an Evo Soda as well that will allow him to evolve that Zoroa. So... Again, it's almost like a fifth Zoroark in a way. Yep. lets you just evolve that that Pokemon straight away. Gets a card out of your deck as well. Yep. Uh, expect to see Frank checking the discard pile a lot during this matchup. Not only do you want to keep track of a bunch of cards that your opponent's playing, like field blowers and puzzle of time pieces, but you also want to keep track of how many items are in the discard pile for Trash Lanch Garbodor to sneak out and uh, take some pretty nice knockouts. Yeah, Benjamin's probably expecting the Garbotoxin Garbodor to come down. He'll make his plays accordingly. Uh, but yeah, anytime Frank can find that Trash Lanch Gar uh, Garbodor, put it down and just take one of those knockouts and then say, knock me back and just take one prize. Yeah. Well, it looks like that Wimpod is going to be trade fodder. Uh, with Parallel City down, he doesn't have any more bench space. This also limits Zorok's attack, and 
And that could be pretty unfortunate too. Only doing 80 damage right now means that Buzz will be able to survive two hits of that riotous beating. Yeah, it's a little, a little rough if Benjamin puts down more Zoroas. Um, they just become targets for that Buzz Ball to knock out and to, to put damage on. It looks like he's finding a Galacipod GX. Going to evolve that Wimpod. Probably the one with the damage, just to make sure it's not going to be knocked out. Yeah. Um, a, ni a nice play by Benjamin. Also, if he is able to find an Acerola in the future, that means he could just pick this Glycepod right back up and uh, play down onto the new, uh, the old other Wimpod sitting on his bench. Yeah, it's the strategy of how first impression usually goes. Yeah. You, know, you have that uh, Glycepod in the front. They don't do enough damage to knock you out, but they do enough uh, to, to warrant an Acerola. You can pick it up, put it back down, send it back out again, and then you have your 120 with first impression. Benjamin off that trade, he was able to find himself a choice band, and I think that's a double colorless energy, and that's that's pretty big. He's going to be able to play down the Mewtwo if he wants to, if he wants to start to put on some pressure, and yeah, it looks like he's just going to strike right now, and uh, what a big swing turn here. If Frank wasn't able to find anything uh, in his hands, we could expect to see Benjamin take a, a nice big sweep in this game, knock it on the buzz wall. And it is enough as well. Um what is Frank's response here? I mean, he doesn't have a follow-up attacker. That Mewtwo just put in so much work. It just came out of nowhere and just took a one-hit knockout on that Buzz Ball. Yeah, if he had multiple Trubbish, I would think maybe he could try to go for a trash Lanch and uh, remove this Mewtwo that way. But it's really scary to just uh, commit to your Trubbish uh, as a trash Lanch and then have no Garbotox in the future. And you can even see him throw his hand up. He's uh, <laughs> I guess I'll bring up Carbink. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, he's probably... If any Pokemon's going to be knocked out, he's probably okay with it being Carbink, uh, given that it's not really putting in much work. But yeah, it looks like he actually had the Trash Lanch Garbota in hand, so all he would have had to have found would be the Rainbow Energy, but maybe he thought, it's very unlikely I'm going to hit it, and I don't want to send this Trash Lanch Garbota out just to die. Yeah, he, he was able to find a, uh, a Trubbish off of that seven cards, but yeah, he wasn't able to find that Rainbow Energy, so that would have been quite awkward for him. Yeah, certainly. And it doesn't look like he's hit too much of of something. I mean, last game we saw he had, what, four float stones down at once? He doesn't have any now, so it seems like that carving's just going to be tracked in the active spot. Yeah, does have that Ultra Ball. He could potentially be looking up for uh, a carving break and try to get something going. Maybe he has some energy in the discard pile that he can take advantage of, and uh, that looks like that's what he's going to do. Uh, pretty awkward Pokemon for Mewtwo. Uh, <laughs> take a, a few <laughs> hits to... Uh, take down this carving break, and that's not what he wants to waste his time doing. Yeah, we haven't seen break Pokemon for a while now. I mean, other than the Greninja Greninja break that was popular in the Greninja decks, I mean, this is probably the only break that's come out for a while that's been in competitive play. Yeah, they uh, they have one of the most interesting arts <laughs> that Pokemon has ever brought out. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> and the cool thing about uh, carving break is that, yes, it accelerates energy to bench Pokemon, but it can accelerate any energy, so it doesn't have to be a basic energy. It can be that rainbow energy, and that's what exactly what Frank's done. Um, and because it's been attached from the bench, it doesn't actually put the damage onto the buzz wall. So that's really great. 190 is always a lot better than having 180 HP. Definitely. And uh, this is where Frank starts to build up his own board and be pretty scary himself. Uh, now it's up to Benjamin to find an answer to this car bank. You don't want Frank to accelerate any more energy. And uh, he'd like to put some pressure onto this buzz wall. Maybe he just hit it again with the Mewtwo. And that seems to be uh, what he's deciding here. He's got Psychic... Uh, which is doing, I, b I believe it's 140 um, with that choice band. Yeah, so it's not a knockout, but it's quite a lot of damage, and it kind of puts a little bit of a... a 180 now. He's got two th the two energies there, of course, so uh, a ton of damage from you two. I don't know if that Espeon EX is going to be able to save Frank here. He hasn't put enough pressure down on the board with Jet Punch. There's only 30 on that Zoroark and uh, 30 on a Golisopod as well. If these Pokemon are devolved, they're not going to be knocked out that turn. Yeah, and uh, he might just be playing this down because he knows he's going to use the Sycamore. Uh, yeah, I like this attachment here on the Trubbish. This means that Garbotoxin uh, could potentially come down onto that Trubbish without having to find a Float Stone. And it looks like he's drawn into it so far. That's that's pretty good for him here. Garbotoxin and Garbota down. Yeah, that'll prevent Trade from being able to be used. Although Benjamin, at this point, he's set up fairly well. I don't believe that Mewtwo's going down unless Frank has drawn an energy and is able to use Knuckle Impact. Yeah, that seems to be what Frank's deciding to do. Generally, that Enhanced Hammer would have gone onto the Mewtwo just to slow it down. Instead, probably eyeing up a knockout here and going to be reliant on that Carbink to reset a, a third uh, buzz wall for him to hopefully clean up the game if you're a, a fan of Frank. <laughs> yeah, 
at Team Frank or Team Benjamin. <laughs> Get out on Twitter and let us know. <laughs> that uh, that Buzzwall really risky having it just at 180 HP though. It's just a 10 away from a knockout, and almost any Pokemon can deal that. Just imagine if the only uh, energy he had was a Rainbow. Oh that goodness! That would have been something. <laughs> would have been so disappointing. So that is the Mewtwo that will go down. I don't believe Benjamin has any recovery cards, so that Mewtwo won't see play again unless we see, you know, the double puzzle of time um, to get that Mewtwo back. Not something you're typically going to be doing, getting Pokemon back with a double puzzle, but if you have to, go for it. If yeah. it is one of your best cards for attacking in this matchup. Benjamin, he's, uh, he's eyeing up Choice Band. He's got a double colorless energy in his hand, so guaranteed has this knockout on the buzz wall. And now it's just what position can he put himself in to... Uh, be ready to stop Garbotoxin. Does he have any way to draw cards? Doesn't look like it. And he's just going to take this knockout on the buzz wall, putting himself down to two prize cards. Yeah, Frank's still on four. This uh, carving break could put in a little bit of work, though. It will only give up one prize if it's knocked out, which is great. It puts a little bit of damage down on the board, and it accelerates energy to set up a buzz wall for a really big hit next the next turn to knock out the Zoroarks and hopefully maybe sweep the rest of the game. But it's quite difficult. Yeah, and... It looks like Frank does have an end here. He's going to be able to put Benjamin down to just two cards. Of course, Garbotoxin is in effect, so Trade will not be able to refill his hand as we're so prone to seeing here on stream with all the <laughs> yeah. Zorg decks that have found success. Uh, Frank's going to find himself four cards, and he's going to get to accelerate some energies onto his Buzzwall, uh, which I think is going to be his final uh, big attacker in this game. Yeah, definitely just loading out that one Buzzwall. If it gets knocked out, I mean, the game is over anyway, so you may as well commit to that one that one Pokemon. Um, on the flip side, though, he does run Ace Roller, so if he did have another attacker out, he could just spread his energy a little bit in Ace Roller and hope that he doesn't get one hit knocked out by anything, but he doesn't have any bench space to put anything else down, That's so right. looks like it's all in on that Buzzwall GX. Yeah, maybe that Espeon uh, should have hit the discard pile. He hasn't been able to... Uh, spread any damage because he's been trying to deal with this Mewtwo and uh, that Mewtwo has just put in so much work uh, messing with Frank and uh, now he just only has this one buzz wall that he has to put all his eggs in. Yeah, like we were discussing before, such a great counter, especially in this matchup when Mew EX, which a lot of players have been playing, wouldn't be able to do, do anything because of that uh, ability lockout by Garboda. So Mewtwo putting in a lot of work here and that buzz wall is pretty threatening. So it's something that Benjamin has to think about dealing with needs to get those those last two prizes. And wow, what a great card for Benjamin to have. He has the field blower. That means his abilities are back in play. He can use trade. And it looks like he's going to trade away an N and uh, try to find something a bit more impactful. Uh, just imagine if you were able to find uh, um, a double puzzle uh, along with his Mew DCE. He could just uh, fight right back into that buzz wall. Finds one puzzle, but unfortunately there are other cards, uh, cards like Zerua and Ultra Ball. Oh, sorry, Zerua and N, yep. uh, which makes it quite not particularly what he's looking for. It doesn't get him that Mewtwo. Yeah, he could uh, right now just go for a Guzma. Uh, if, if he hits for 100 into the Buzzwall with uh, maybe Energy Drive or, or one of his Zorarks, uh, that would be a, a fairly nice way to make sure that this Buzzwall is not a threat. Of course, Frank could just Ace Rolla and play it back down, but it won't have all those energies in play, which is the real main reason why Benjamin's so worried about this Buzzwall. Yeah, definitely. And a Guzma would deal 100 damage as well, so leads a, a riotous beating, could knock it out the next turn, anything like that. And Frank, you know, he doesn't have a turn to sort of waste. He can't allow that Buzzwall to, to be knocked out. He can't take a knockout and then leave the Buzzwall in the active in that case uh, because Benjamin only needs two prizes and Frank needs four. Yeah, uh, Benjamin's just going to take a look at everything that Frank has played so far in this game. See a few Fighting Fury belts. Don't know if there's anything else that could maybe increase the hit points uh, of this Buzzwall so that it could survive maybe two hits. Um, I'm sure that's something that he's keeping an eye on. Maybe the Ace Roll account as well. He decides to play one puzzle to look at the top three cards of his deck and manipulate what he's going to draw next turn. And <laughs> looks like it's two Zoroak GX and an N, perhaps? Yeah, and uh, that is... Not something he wants to see. He just rearranges uh, which Zorak he's going to draw because it's not terribly impactful. But he does have that other Zerua. Maybe Frank doesn't find another tool card for his Garbotoxin Garboder. And uh, oh, he's actually just <laughs> going to target down this Garbotoxin. says, if I have my abilities, I'm going to find another Guzma and I'll be able to take out that Carvink or that Trubbish, uh, probably a Trubbish, and, uh, and be able to uh, finish this game. 
Yeah, and so what does Frank send out here? I mean, if he knocks out the the Zoroark, if he knocks out, he could set up more energy with the carping break. I mean, it's a little bit awkward. He could definitely take a knockout with the Buzzwall against almost any Pokemon in play. Excuse yeah. me, they're not a strong energy, are they? Oh, there's one strong energy. So he can do 180 with that uh, Knuckle Impact. Yeah, he uh, looks like he is going to eye up that Buzzwall. Well, maybe He's going to think about it first, think about I think. It for a second. Yeah, this is a pretty big turn. Frank would love to find an, another Garbotoxin Garbodor and get that into play with a tool. He does have Guzma available to him if he maybe he wants to try to set up a, a knockout with his jet punches. The strong energies against fighting weak Pokemon uh, means he can get to some pretty interesting numbers sometimes um, with hitting Zoroarks. And this is one of those cases where he doesn't run Choice Band. Uh, Choice Band could be quite relevant in hitting that 210 HP on Golisopod GX. Uh, 180 with Knuckle impact, impact plus that Choice Band would deal 210. But with just those Fury Belts, kind of capped at 190. Yeah, it looks like Frank does have an Ultra Ball here. He also has N, so he can go ahead and find uh, Garbotox and Garbodor if it's available to him. And he does find it. Uh, he can also play out, I think, the rest of his hand and then use that N. And if he's able to find a tool, uh, that means that Benjamin's really left with just the one card he gets off N and his top deck uh, to find a way to finish this game, or else Frank's going to be in the driver's seat. And we know that if that uh, doesn't come down, he's going to be top decking that Zoroark GX. Uh, he's going to have access to, what, three trades in the next turn if that tool doesn't come down and block out that uh, those trade abilities. And so he's going to be having a look at a lot of his deck, and he's probably going to find what he needs. Definitely. Energy comes down. Yeah, don't have to worry about Mewtwo anymore. So uh, <laughs> yeah. might as well just add those strong energies on there. Uh, if you can get uh, a jet punch for a knockout, uh, that would be pretty great. You can always just put that 30 damage on to a Pokemon that potentially was out of range this of Knuckle Impact. And this is a pretty big draw for Frank here. So he really has to get off these four cards. A tool card. He yeah. does run a lot of tools. We did see four float stones in the last game. And we know there are quite a few uh, Fighting Fury Belts as well. Four as well. Um, a few have come down this game and... You know, hit the discard pile, but not so many oh. that top decks of floatstones. That is exactly what you want to see if you're Frank. Uh, he actually found both, so he can uh, try to increase the hit points of maybe even the Trubbish if he's worried about that being targeted. Uh, I think that that may be the only thing he's, he would be worried about getting knocked out by a Zorark. Uh, if Zorark were able to do riotous beating with a Guzma and an Energy, uh, I don't think you'd have to worry about your Buzzwell being knocked out anytime soon. Yeah, definitely. Could be a play open to him, but he just elects to knock out the Zorak GX and take two prizes. Now, we've got to see what Benjamin drew. Will he be lucky, just like we saw Michael Promot took the energy switch? Will Benjamin well, find the field blower? Promoting Zorua, it could mean energy Guzma, <laughs> but uh, he has to get fairly lucky. He says, oh, I found an N. And, uh, oh, it was double N. <laughs> that's, uh, that's not going to do very much for him. He would love to find a field blower off this one card, but then he can't even use trade doesn't have anything to give up for that trade, and that's not a trade I'm going to do. Yeah, no freebies. <laughs> you have to trade something away to get those two cards. If you do it fast enough, maybe you can trade the field blower as you use it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no one's looking. <laughs> We're going to have to see what he's going to grab off this end here. And I mean, leaving the Zorua in the active spot's not terrible because it will only give up one prize, and that means that Frank won't win the game. Um, yeah, Frank, he did not find himself a, a Guzma, which would have been a great card for him. And yeah, Benjamin just passed the turn there, did not have anything available to him, and he probably needs to keep a card in his hand so that he has something to trade if his top deck is exactly. the, uh, the field blower. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's one of those, uh, those things that the better players to think about. Uh, you know, they might have an Ultra Ball in hand, or they think, I have two cards, I'll just not play them because I might draw Ultra Ball. Yeah. Probably that he comes down again. Yeah, maybe possibly. he should get rid of his Trubbish. <laughs> He's going to play it the other way and limit uh, Benjamin's bench here. Yep, does get to remove that Golisopod uh, from the board. It, this also means that maybe if uh, Benjamin does find a uh, Tapu Lele along with the Field Blower, that he isn't able to find that supporter card, which would have been fairly big for him and would be only left to just trading. So uh, Frank just maximizing his outs of his opponent not having any outs. Yeah, for sure. We're going to see a Jet Punch now, and he's, Frank's just elect, deciding which Pokemon to put the 30 damage on, and he probably correctly identifies it should be Golisopod GX, just yeah. because he can't really easily hit that 210 damage. Softening it up to a 180 is certainly uh, doable with Knuckle Impact. 
Yep, if uh, Benjamin were to find Enhance Hammer and uh, the Skelly Spot didn't have any damage on it, then uh, would have been strictly incorrect. But Frank, <laughs> he knows what he's doing, and there's the handshake. Benjamin extends the hand. A uh, big win here for Frank Perchek. He needed this. Uh, he was he had already uh, played last round, and he lost to one of the Gardevoir uh, Zoroark decks. And uh, I think this almost solidifies that he's going to be in our top eight with just an ID in the following round. Yeah, I think so. So that will put him at 29 match points. And so one more puts him at 30. And I mean, we haven't done the math. We're not complete experts on this. But I'm not a calculator. <laughs> <laughs> 30 points should.